Golfers all throughout the state of Michigan are incredibly blessed with the opportunity to play any of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of courses. On today's edition of Michigan Golf Live Television, we look forward to opening your eyes up to five new destinations that bring together creatures like wolverines and eagles and a few others along the way. Stick around, we've got a very special edition of MGL TV straight ahead. Welcome to Michigan Golf Live Television, shining the spotlight on the greatest places to stay, play, and enjoy the greatest game on earth. Stay connected to MGL 24-7 on Facebook, Twitter, and free podcast of MGL Radio, heard live across Michigan every Saturday morning. MGL TV starts now. Welcome to Michigan Golf Live Television. I'm Bill Hobson and I've got some serious work to do on my game because today's program takes us to five really cool destinations all around the state. This is kind of a special edition of our show called Great University Courses. And over the course of the next few minutes, we're gonna take you to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, to Michigan State in East Lansing, to Grand Valley State in Allendale, to Ferris State in Big Rapids, and we launch our tour in Ypsilanti the home of the Eagles, Eastern Michigan University. You can't have a discussion about great university courses without including Eagle Crest at Eastern Michigan in that discussion. So Wes, what is it about the course that's so good? It's the piece of property. We're located right on Ford Lake. Uh, no residential homes. We do have uh, the Marriott Hotel located on property. So we are the only resort in Southeast Michigan. So you can come here, stay at the hotel, play 18 holes of championship golf, and uh, just have a great time. And a little bit of advice to all of you who are going to come here and play, grab a couple extra sleeves of golf balls. There's, there's some water here. There is some water. Uh, 13 of the 18 holes have water on them. Uh, the Carl Litton was the golf, golf course architect. He's from Boca Raton, Florida. So our course does have a South Florida feel to it. You've worked really hard to get the word out to the entire region that Eagle Crest is open. If you're watching, you can come and play here. Um, how's the messaging effort going over the last few years? The marketing is doing very well. We do get a lot of students that come here and play from Eastern Michigan University, but we also have students from Washington Community College, Schoolcraft, and the University of Michigan. So we are open to the public. Anyone can come here, stay at the hotel, uh, just even come to the Roy E. Wilbanks Clubhouse and just get a bite to eat in the bar and grill. And you don't have to be a student, you can be an old guy like me come here and tee it up. Uh, do you have a favorite stretch of holes? I do. Uh, 14, 15, and 16. And 16 is our signature hole. It's a risk reward par 5, 525 yards. Ford Lake runs down the right hand side and your approach shots to a uh, peninsula green. On a nice breezy day like this, that's a full challenge right there. It is. It is. A lot of guys come in to the bar and grill after and talk about hole 16. If you're going to play a golf course with water on 13 holes, might I recommend your game be razor sharp. At Eagle Crest, there's an academy designed just for you. Craig Piscopink is the director of instruction. So what's your philosophy? And while you answer, I'm going to, I'm going to sharpen up my short Sounds game a little good. bit. Sounds good. I mean, the, the one major component that we have to start with is our concept. You know, what are we trying to do with the golf club? Um, creating a little bit more brain and body awareness. Um, the second factor is, is making sure that, uh, you know, we have a good, solid routine. We know how to execute our shots. And, and third and foremost is, you know, how we practice. I think if we practice correctly, it's easier to transfer that, you know, practice onto the golf course. I see a lot of errors happen when we go to the range, you know, we just hit a bunch of golf balls, we don't have any pressure, and then we get out there and we, we don't see the same results. Do you think people will believe that I actually made every one of those shots while you were talking? They could, they could. They should, I would <laughs> hope that they do. Hey, it's a fantastic option to have here at Eagle Crest. I'm glad you're doing some instruction. We all need it. And we're gonna tackle a course this beautiful and this challenging, like I said at the beginning, you, you better have your game in shape. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's where short game, we're in the right spot right now. You know, 70% of scoring, you know, of our total score comes from inside 100 yards. You know, and, and it's fun to hit the, you know, the driver long and straight, which it does help to, to Wait, position people yourself. People sometimes hit those <laughs> long and straight? To position yourself, you know, it's like square, you know, square one, you know, square one, you put yourself in the position to score, and then uh, from there, the scoring really happens between that 100 yards and end. 
All right, when you come to play Eagle Crest, get your game ready first. Visit Craig at the Academy, and then go out and tackle this beautiful course at Eastern Michigan University. There is a sprawling, growing, vibrant campus in Allendale near Grand Rapids. It's the site of Grand Valley State University and the home of the Lakers. It's the home of Don Underwood as well and the Meadows Golf Course. And man, what a setting you have here. This is beautiful. Yeah, thanks, Bill. We're very lucky with what we have and the, uh, the golf operation here sitting right on campus and the way the campus ties in, it's a, it's a great setup for us. There's always something happening at the Meadows, whether it's open play or championship play, and, and you've got a little bit of everything here. Absolutely. It's, uh, we've done a lot of different events through the years. We've hosted nine national championships. Um, a variety of local events, a variety of outings, and uh, just a whole bunch of different stuff. And, uh, you know, really one of the, the strengths of our golf course is that it sets up for a lot of different levels, you know, with the, uh, with the options that we have on our tee boxes, uh, with the, the friendliness of the greens, it's not a real extreme, um, you know, whole location set up, so we can really make it a whole lot of a whole lot of variety. I mean, we can make it play very user friendly. We can make it play very difficult. So, it's been great. A great example of that versatility today. We saw high school golfers. We saw senior golfers. And this course is playable for all ages. Yes, it is. And when the senior groups come out here, they find that the the gold tees and our forward tees uh, really give them a yardage that is it, very accommodating for them. And uh, so, yeah, it, it's all ages that we get out here. This golf course fits into this university's kind of ethos in a really cool way, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It, it helps us in many ways. First of all, it gives us a great asset to have. Second of all, it gets a lot of people the first exposure to the university. They, they may not come to campus, but it gives them a reason to come to campus in an outing or just playing golf. And the experience that they have here because of the, the work that Don and Terry and Ron have done gives them a very positive impact and, and um, view of the university, which then gives them encouragement them to come on and look. So we consider it a really good recruitment tool for us as a university to get students here on campus. And there are a lot of students here on campus. Grand Valley has grown exponentially over the last 10 years or so, hasn't it? Yes, it has. We're over 25,000 students right now. We almost just about 25,450 students on campus this last fall. And we expect to be a very similar number this fall. Not every university golf course has this close of a relationship with the university. It seems like here at Grand Valley, it's really quite a partnership. Oh yes, because obviously a golf team gets to play out here, so that does it, but a lot of the administration, a lot of outings, many of our departments have outings out here, and a lot of our faculty staff come out here because, like you said, it's right here. You can actually walk. We have the, you know, the, the grill that people come for lunch, so it really embraces the golf course, and loves, including our president, so it, it, it really does tie in. It's a great compliment to the university that we have here. This man does a lot of hard work to make this course so special. Ron Deline, what do you love most about the Meadows? This is your baby. There are two things that really excite me about being at the Meadows here at GVSU. Number one is the amount of tournament golf. I don't know if I can explain to you how much we do. And the thing of it is we don't shut down to get ready for it. Everything from high school golf to um, regional, national NCAA championships, even league championships. For us, it keeps us on the top of our game. It's something that really excites me and gets me out of bed in the morning. For our team, we work really hard to get good at the jobs that we do. We work really hard to get it done right the first time because we really can't come into play and finish it off the second time. The second thing that really excites me is the team members that we have. I get to pull from a large pool of employees and they're predominantly all college kids. It's a great atmosphere to work in the university, it really is. We had a great time on campus in Ypsilanti at Eastern Michigan University and a wonderful time here in Allendale at Grand Valley State. But we've got a long road ahead and so I needed to grab a little bit of a snack here to get us through the travel. It's not all for me, don't worry, I'm just having the pineapple. When we come back, we head to Big Rapids, the home of Ferris State University and the Bulldogs. Our tour of the great university courses around Michigan continues in Big Rapids at Ferris State University where not only can you come and play a wonderful course and enjoy an experience for a day, but young people like these are discovering you can spend a career immersed in the game. Excuse me, Mr. Hobson. We're trying to have class here. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I copy your notes real quick? The entire golf industry across America has been influenced by what takes place in the PGM program at Ferris State University. That's no exaggeration, is it? I mean, this is for real. Absolutely. 
We've been doing it since 1975. So we were the first to have PGA Golf Management. It was professional golf management at that time, but now it's PGA Golf Management. And we wrote the program for the PGA in conjunction with their education department to give the students a business degree and work on their PGA of America requirements. So you fast forward the clock 43 years later and we have over a thousand PGA professionals working in the industry with almost 1900 graduates. Wow. Well, it always amazes me that you see so many young men and women who are in love with the game and want to spend their careers in it, maybe not as players, but in some way, shape, or form, and you're training them in all those ways. Absolutely. One of the first questions I ask the students, I ask them, how many of your parents love their jobs? And very few hands come up. And I said, this is an opportunity for you to do something that you love for the rest of your life. And the golf industry is now, they estimate about $78 billion in the United States as the golf impact. So any, the students can do any job related to golf in the industry. So there's the traditional path that they want to be a head professional, director of golf, instructor, run tournaments. Um, some want to go into merchandising or become sales reps. But it can be even as stretched that if you want to go work for a large company such as Boeing and you want to get involved in their real estate division, you could work for Boeing Realty, for example, and also be a PJ professional, which is really nice that the, that the PJ of America has expanded the career paths to have a full impact on the industry. Keeping people connected to the game is what keeps the game alive. And I love the way that, that the Ferris State program is laying the, the foundation for that, really. Absolutely. It's, it's neat to be able to take students' passion. So they, they grew up, they loved the game of golf. So they were all players to some extent. They love playing the game in high school. They come into college. They have the opportunity if, they are, if they're good enough to play on the NCAA team or continue to play in our tournament series that we have here. So you take that talent and that excitement that they have for the industry and then we direct it with a business degree and then put them out in the field where they can have professional careers doing something they love the rest of their life. The connection between the Pro Golf Management Program and the university is, is really incredible. This is a, a national trendsetter for golf, isn't it? It is, it is. We were the first ones to partner with the PGA for a professional golf management program like this. And then as a result, the university has almost 2,000 alumni who have an affiliation with the game, many of them, more than half of them, still working in the game. And so that's created a number of wonderful partnerships for the university that uh, really have spanned all of the academic programs. There's a lot of pride there amongst our alumni generally. And there's a great network of resources out there with the game that uh, really keep things relevant for the students that are here today. Not to be lost in the excitement about the PGM program is a great golf course and facility here at Ferris State. Share with us what's special about Cat Key. Well, one, it's a little bit unique. We have 21 holes, so we have some opportunity to be convenient to a lot of players if time's an issue. So that's something that we uh, we think is really unique and fun here. Um, so essentially guests can come out, play three holes, five holes, nine holes, or 18 holes, depending on time. We've got a tremendous facility for tournament play, and it lends itself really, really nicely to avid players that are newer to the game. It's a good fair test of golf for most players, yet challenging for the you know elite level college players too. So we kind of got everything. We have everything for everybody. What's the feel of the course itself? Very traditional, you know, there's some movement as far as the land, there's some undulation, um, there's some elevation change on certain holes. It's tree line, we have some high grass. So you get a little blend of everything, but it's very traditional as far as the setup goes. Everything's right in front of you, so what you see is what you get. But like I said, it, it can be uh, challenging to, to those that need that challenge, and it can be also very playable for those that need a little more friendly, uh, friendly time out here. You host public play, but you've also hosted championships for the high school association, for NCAA, so this is a versatile property. Very much so. You know, our facility is perfect for tournament play. It's super convenient to the teams that come in. We've got a hotel very conveniently located next door so that players can come practice all day, get prepared for the tournament round that's upon them. So it's, uh, it's just perfect for tournament play really quite a complete golf destination for either a day or for a career, isn't it? For sure. Yeah, I mean, our facility is a lab for those PGM students that we uh, have here at Ferris, and everything this facility does is to help better educate them and make them prepared for the real world as they, uh, as they leave us. So from the golf operation, our tournament operations, and learning and teaching how to play and teach players how to play, um, you know, we have it all here. Our time here at Ferris State has come to an end, but before we leave Big Rapids, we need a little long drive competition against the young whippersnappers, 310, 320. And now let's see what the old man's got left in the tank. 
<laughs> I'm not sure why they're laughing. That's one of my better tee shots. That was at least 220. Did you guys beat that? Our tour of the great university courses in Michigan continues at a university where green is the prevailing theme. Not just the grass, but the school colors as well, as we're in East Lansing at Michigan State University, Forest Acres. Brian Harris is a golf professional here, and what a great setting this is for golf. You know, we're very fortunate. Uh, the, the West Golf Course that we're on, that'll be 60 years old next year, um, has every native tree uh, to the state of Michigan, so that's pretty special, I think, in a day and age where courses are cutting down trees, and we're able to, you know, keep them um, here at the golf course. So it's a unique place, fun place to go play, especially if you you bleed green, so. Well, Michigan State is known, of course, for its turf grass uh, work, its agricultural work, and all of that research really comes into play on this beautiful course. It's in immaculate shape. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a great year this year. The turf grass uh, professionals that we have here do come help us and assist us a little bit, which is great, because they're the experts in, in you know, that field. So uh, we're fortunate to have them and fortunate to be you know, close enough to them to have, you know, have, have their help. We are seeing all over the course today, high school kids who have dreams of being state champions, getting in a little practice. On another day, you may have a USGA qualifier or a Big Ten tournament. This course is made for championship golf, isn't it? Yeah, we, we feel so. Uh, the Golf Association of Michigan does a lot of events with us, um, as do uh, uh, a junior tour. Um, does a lot of events with the high school state finals. has been here since 1983. So that's a, a great relationship that we have with them. Um, and along with hosting the 2019 Division I Women's uh, Midwest Regional, which we'll have, um, which is exciting for us. We haven't had one in, a, in many years, so we're looking forward to that and already starting the planning process on that. And here at MSU, they're celebrating the, the ladies winning the Big Ten Golf Championship. So these are good days to be a golfer and a Spartan. It's fantastic, yeah. It's, uh, it's a wonderful time around here. Uh, golf's catching up to football and basketball and those sorts of things, so it's, uh, it's uh, an exciting time for us, yes. Can you describe the character of Forest Acres West? in 30 seconds. What's it like on this course? Yeah, pristine, um, uh, beautiful setting, um, and, and just a challenging yet fun, um, enjoyable golf course to play. And part of the overall university dedication to the game. It's not just the golf course proper, it's practice facilities, research facilities, and, and more. Yeah, well, I, I think we benefit from some of that. And uh, um, the nice thing here is we're able to continue to improve every year. Um, whether it's uh, you know a building or a, a something on the golf course, anything like that, and so we're able to keep everything kind of new when people come, and it's not something that's uh, a 60-year-old facility that looks 60 years old. Um, so we, we pride ourselves on that, but it's uh, it's fun to be at, you know have the opportunity to grow and, and continue to improve the, the golf course and the facility. The key to playing this game well is practice, 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 and at Michigan State University, they love to have people come here and practice. The director of instruction is Chad Kermel. What a great facility. Yeah, we're very lucky to uh, have this facility. You know, we've got the grass tees both ends. The golf team has their own tee on the back side also. Uh, we have mats in the, for the winter time with heaters over it. So, so year-round year round facility. That's one of the reasons that this became one of the top 50 ranges in America. Correct. Yes. Along with general practice opportunities, you've got some more customized instruction that the public's invited to take part in as well, right? Yes, we have a big part of our our beginner programs so we have get golf ready for men we have get golf ready for ladies we have one day golf schools that are four hour then you get to go out and play golf so anything that you're looking for juniors uh, are big we have a pga junior league team that we have 48 kids in this year and then we do summer camps throughout the summer that are a week long so we have many many options on top of private instruction and for fully grown adults who are wanting to get into the game, can you help them as well? Yes, so our Get Golf Ready program is five sessions. We go all over the basics, so putting, chipping, pitching, full swing, and then the last one they get out on the golf course. And then after that's over, we'll give them an opportunity. We put together a tournament for everybody that's in that program to kind of give them a tournament feel also. So it's the full experience here on campus. Yes. You can go play a championship course, and you can come and get instruction so you could be a champion. Absolutely, that's what we strive for. I told you a few minutes ago that green was the theme of the day here at Forest Acres West at Michigan State University. Championship golf, a wonderful practice and teaching facility and so much more. 
And now we make our final stop in our tour of the great university courses. We head 63 miles away where we change out of green and white and in the maize and blue. It was way back in 1990 when a young energetic student by the name of Billy Hobson capped off his college career on the campus of the University of Michigan. This special setting is part of my past, so it's a thrill to conclude our great university golf course special by returning to the University of Michigan where tradition exists in this building and at a golf course on just the other side. It's an amazing setting on the campus of the University of Michigan because golfers have the opportunity to enjoy both an Alistair McKenzie and a Pete Tye golf course. Chantel Jackson's been here quite some time. I'm back home. It Welcome feels home. so good. It's our pleasure. But before we get too far, Bill, I have to say, you know at the University of Michigan, we're a little fond of a particular color scheme. Oh, got it. So I, I think we have to fix a little bit more here. I think this one might match our colors a little bit better than your bed. Thanks, Andrew. I have no complaints about that. All right, so now we're now we ready. Can talk golf. We can go. Literally in the shadow of the big house, Literally. this golf course sits as a true championship test. Mr. McKenzie, of course, has some well known properties around the world. What's special about this one? Well, McKenzie is really known for his green complexes. That's truly where his art form came out. And our course is no different. So specifically, we want to take a look at hole six. It's a true McKenzie two-tier green. But just his whole eye for architecture and his green complexes really set us apart. It might actually surprise a lot of people watching to realize the elevation changes that you have on this course. We're in downtown Ann Arbor. You wouldn't think of it as being this this hilly. This, this terrain is quite surprising. It's absolutely fabulous to be in Ann Arbor this connected to the University of Michigan and have a property of this caliber, it's very special. Not only is the outside property amazing, wonderful here, but you've done some cool things inside that brand new clubhouse, including some catering and the opportunity to host big events. Absolutely. So thanks to the generosity of our donors, we finally have a clubhouse to match the caliber of golf course we've always had. So I really hope we can take an opportunity to show you the stunning, magnificent views from the ballroom that overlook the golf course. And we hope that people can come here and just really enjoy this as a nice little escape. Whether it's for lunch, whether it's to putt on the putting green or to come play 18 holes, it's just a stone throw away from any place to just take a deep breath and get some R&R. There is only one way to end a day after you play the McKenzie course. You have to come inside for dinner and dessert before making your way over to Radrick Farms. Cheers and go blue. The wonderful experience of golf at the University of Michigan moves away from downtown for its second golf course, where Pete Dye kind of got his start at Radrick Farms. Corbin Todd, what did, what did the master designer Dye do here? Um, he left us a beautiful, natural golfing experience. And it was his resume starter for the most part, wasn't it? It was. Um, Bill Newcomb, who's designed many golf courses up north, and Travis Point locally here, did uh, his master's project. He went to school here and did his master's project, designed 36 holes here. And then the president, Harlan Hatcher at the time, asked him who could actually build this. Uh, it was built on a Mathai family uh, property donated and uh, Bill ended up uh, one of the people he said could do it was Pete Dye and uh, lo and behold he did it. They, they say when they hit the entrance and they start driving through it's just like the rest of society and the busyness just kind of goes away and they just they just relax. You can be on this golf course and feel like you're the only one on this golf course. It's very interesting the parking lots removed from the clubhouse so when you come up and you start your round at the first tee at the clubhouse, you don't see the parking lot, you don't realize how many people are here. Uh, you can feel like you have the whole place to yourself, so it really enhances that natural, like almost like you just went up north, escaped. In the end, it really doesn't matter what your favorite school colors are when it comes to golf. Perhaps you like maize and blue, or green and white, or blue and white, or maroon and gold, or whatever the combination is, here's what we all know. The common bond that we share, aside from fight songs and preferences, is we love great golf experiences. So here's your invitation to tee it up at any of the five great university courses we feature today. And enjoy yourself, because you don't even have to take a final exam. We'll see you next time on Michigan Golf Live Television.